Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the Q cycle in a little bit more detail. Um, and uh, so in order to do this, uh, I'm gonna go back to complex one and two and talk about coenzyme Q and where it, it gets those electrons and then take it to complex three and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and as a disclaimer, um, in, in class, we're gonna, we're gonna see, it's like a little bit confusing like the first time you see the Q cycle. So um, my recommendation is uh, to watch a few, or you don't have to necessarily watch this video again, but um, you, sh you should definitely don't feel bad if you don't understand it after the first time. I think it takes a few repetitions to see this, um, this video, watch it in class, what, maybe watch a few different videos. And um, every person has a slightly different way of explaining it. So um, whatever way works best for you, um, just find a video that um, hopefully explains things properly, but makes sense for you and you can understand it in your way. Okay. So um, again, to resummarize, complexes one and four are going to be using these proton wires, which again are activated by the electron transport, which causes a conformational change in the proton wires, causing the net translocation of protons from the matrix to the IMS. And then you also have complex three, which is which uses the Q cycle, which we we it's like a it uses redox loops. And now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these redox loops and see what's exactly going on in the Q cycle. Okay, so remember we said that NADH um, it's going to donate its electrons. It's going to go through complex one, um, through FMN, through iron sulfur clusters, and it's going to eventually be passed. Both the electrons are going to be passed to coenzyme Q, and um, as it goes through it, you're going to get four protons through complex one. But the idea here is that coenzyme Q, it's going to get those two electrons from NADH. So we're going to go from here to here. We're going to get those two electrons. Okay. And those two electrons, once coenzyme Q get, accepts those two electrons, it's also going to take two protons from the mitochondrial matrix. So basically, in other words, we're reducing coenzyme Q on the matrix side of the inner membrane. So we're reducing coenzyme Q on this matrix side of the of of or on the matrix side of the inner membrane. Okay, so coenzyme Q is going to then take those two electrons and two protons, and it's going to become CoQH2. And I want to make an additional note, which I didn't make in the last video. Okay, so CoQ, um, it's ubiquinone, and then CoQH2 is ubiquinol. A lot of people on the final exam, they say, oh my God, we don't have CoQ and CoQH2 on our reduction table chart. So I wanna make sure you guys understand that you're not gonna see these exact things on your uh, table for reduction potentials. You're gonna see ubiquinone and ubiquinol, okay? And the way that you can remember it is that, well, this is the oxidized form, right? We say that before it gets those electrons, it's CoQ. And then after it accepted those two electrons, we said that it is reduced form of ubiquinol. Now, the idea here is that, remember, if we go back to our OCHEM like nomenclature, and I know I don't want to bring back OCHEM for a lot of people, it brings back bad memories, but remember, O-N-E, that's a ketone, okay, and then O-L, that's an alcohol. So notice how we reduce this. This is the reduced form, whereas this one is the oxidized form, okay? So that's, that's how I like to remember it, is that coenzyme Q, or ubiquinone, is the uh, it's the oxidized form and then CoQH2 is, or ubiquinol is a reduced form and has the alcohol because it, it accepted those electrons and those two protons to become uh, ubiquinol. Okay. So now, so now what we did is we, we formed CoQH2 and it got reduced on the matrix side and it's going to take those electrons. Remember Co coenzyme Q is lipophilic and it's a mobile electron carrier. It's going to take those electrons to complex three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to undergo the Q cycle. And there's two half cycles in the Q cycle, but it's really the same thing that just happens twice. Um, I, and I don't want to make it more complex. It's literally two things happening twice and we just have a recycling step. And that's why it's, it sounds like there's a lot going on, okay? So what's gonna happen is coenzyme Q or CoQH2 is gonna, it's gonna travel up to complex three onto the IMS side. Now it's on, notice how it started off on the matrix side. Now it's on the IMS side. And what it's going to do is it's now going to get oxidized. And when it gets oxidized, notice how it had two electrons. Well, it's going to, when it gets oxidized, it's going to pass its two electrons to complex three. So it has two electrons here. Okay. Now, 
when it gets oxidized, and ignore the two over here. This is going to come in later. Okay, so ignore the two right now for now. What it's what's going to happen is that it's going to donate those two electrons and those two protons. Okay, so the two protons go. It's going to get oxidized and it's going to uh, donate those protons to the IMS. Okay, so that's why if you see on the study questions, we see it gets reduced on the it gets reduced on the matrix side and it gets oxidized on the IMS side so that we can donate two protons into the IMS. Now, the two electrons, I want you guys to think about it like this. Well, coenzyme Q has two electrons. Cytochrome C can only accept one electron. So if we directly oxidize coenzyme Q and we didn't have the Q cycle, what would happen is, well, those two electrons, what we would do, one of them will go to cytochrome C. That's very good. And then we can continue on with the rest of the electron transfer chain. But what would happen to that other electron? It, we kind of wasted the whole electron. And if you remember, like we went through all of this, like the, all of these steps of glycolysis, the TCA cycle, it will be such a waste to waste one of your electrons whenever you went through all of this work and we, we want to maximize the amount of energy we want to make, right? So the idea here is that we're going to undergo the Q cycle so that we can save that electron, okay? I don't know why I emphasize save so much, but where am I? Okay, so what we're trying to do with the Q cycle is we're trying to recycle one of those electrons and save the electrons so that we don't waste any electrons or any energy, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down into half cycles. So what we just saw up to now, what do we see? Well, we just saw that coenzyme Q, um, we, we're gonna just start off over here. We saw that we started off with a CoQH2 from complex one, we reduced it on the matrix side. And we went to complex three and it became coenzyme Q. And in the process, what we did is we pumped two protons. Maybe we shouldn't do it like that. We pumped two protons into IMS. Okay, so that's what we have right now. And I just told you guys, again, if we directly oxidize coenzyme Q, we would waste one of those electrons because cytochrome C can only accept one electron at a time, but coenzyme Q has two electrons. So if we directly oxidize coenzyme Q, we would only get two protons and we would waste one electron. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna undergo the Q cycle. So the, these two electrons, what actually happens is, yes, that first electron goes to cytochrome C and it goes on, but the second electron, what it's gonna do is that, so one is gonna go like this, the other one is going to come down over here. And what's happening is that there's actually another coenzyme Q that's oxidized waiting here inside of complex three. So what's going to happen is what it's going to accept that electron. So it's going to become a radical semiquinone. Okay. So what we're doing is we're basically breaking up the two electrons. One of the electrons goes to cytochrome C. One of the electrons goes to coenzyme Q and it forms this radical uh, semiquinone intermediate. So up to now, this is the first half cycle. What we did is we effectively, again, oxidized Co CoQH2 on the, uh, on the IMS side, and we, we pumped those two protons into the IMS through complex three, and we took one of the electrons and passed it to cytochrome C. Then we passed that other electron to coenzyme Q that was oxidized, but now we're making a radical intermediate. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing for the second half cycle, okay? So this is, a lot of students are like, why are we doing it a second time? You're gonna see in one second why we do it a second time. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, so this coenzyme QH2, it donates its protons and it becomes, again, it becomes a CoQ, and then it goes back so that it can get more electrons. Now a different coenzyme Q is going to get those electrons from either complex one or complex two, it doesn't matter, but it's gonna then get reduced, okay? It's gonna get reduced on the matrix side again, and it's gonna become CoQH2 again. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna come back and do the exact same thing. So now a different coenzyme QH2 is gonna come and travel over here to CoQ, it's gonna come and travel over here to complex three, it's gonna be coenzyme QH2, the reduced form, and it's gonna get oxidized the exact same way. One of the electrons is gonna to go to cytochrome C, and it's a completely different cytochrome C. So now the cytochrome C um, is, is a new one that still needs its electron. And then uh, the other electron 
again, it's going to be broken up and it's going to go to the, the, but the same coenzyme Q that was the radical though, now becomes this, this two minus intermediate. Okay. But the idea here is that, okay, so we go from, again, if we keep tally, again, what we're doing is we're doing the exact same thing. And we're pumping again, two H plus into IMS. So now we pumped a total of four. Now, you're going to say, well, okay, so we just did the same thing again. So how are we saving the electrons? Well, notice over here, what we just did is we took those two electrons and this coenzyme Q can take two protons. And now what we did is we actually created a new CoQH2. We created another CoQH2, which can then go back into uh, the Q cycle and start a new Q cycle. But the idea here is that we effectively recycled those electrons. Notice how we just took those electrons back, and now we can, we can then pass those electrons again to cytochrome C through a new Q cycle, okay? So if I wanna keep track of this one, okay, so this is the first half cycle, the second half cycle, and then the recycling, I'm just gonna call it the recycling, because we also have to keep account for this. Notice how we went from CoQ, the oxidized form or ubiquinone, to ubiquinol now because we, we, we basically pass one electron each time. So each time we oxidize CoQH2, we pass one electron every time to cytochrome C, but also to this coenzyme Q so that we fully reduce this so that it can form CoQH2 again. So all together, so if I, if I go like this, if I'm just keeping tally, what I did over here is I went from CoQ, I went from CoQ, I went to CoQH2. So I have to keep tally of that too. And then this is gonna be recycled. Or we already said recycling, so I don't need to say that again. Okay, now if I keep tally of everything, so now let me write out my net reaction for the Q cycle. So Q cycle net reaction. Okay, so we have CoQH2 goes to CoQ. We have another CoQH2 in the second half cycle, go to another CoQ. And then overall, because we saved two of the electrons, we go from CoQ and we re-reduce another coenzyme Q to CoQH2. So if we're writing out our net reaction, notice how these two are the reverse of each other. So we can effectively take these, we can cancel them out in our net reaction because they're basically the opposite of each other. So we can cross this out, we can cross this out. So our net reaction is one coenzyme QH2 going to being oxidized to CoQ. And, but notice how overall we're pumping actually four protons for one coenzyme Q, okay? So the idea here is that each of these half cycles pump two protons each. So all together we're pumping four protons, but we're also recycling the two of the electrons and we're forming another CoQH2. So net, what we're doing is we're oxidizing one CoQH2 into CoQ, and we're pumping four protons from the matrix into the IMS. Now, again, this is very, very useful because again, we don't want to waste those electrons. And effectively what we did right now is think about it again. If we directly oxidize the first CoQH2, if we just did the, if we didn't recycle the electron, we, if we just directly oxidize this group right over here, what would happen is we would pump those two protons, we would get one electron to cytochrome C, but we would waste that other electron, right? We would waste that electron. And we would only get two protons for one coenzyme Q. But now what we're doing is we're going through the Q cycle, we go through two half cycles. So coenzyme Q gets oxidized twice. So we get two of these to get four H pluses, okay? And we're also gonna, so remember coenzyme Q can carry two electrons. So on each half cycle, one electron goes to cytochrome C. On the other half cycle, one electron goes to coenzyme Q. So overall, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna fully reduce this coenzyme Q that was waiting inside complex three, and we're gonna basically fully reduce it to CoQH2, so we're recycling a coenzyme Q overall. So going back to our net reaction again, this recycling step cancels out one of the half reactions, or one of the half cycles, and our net reaction gets us four protons for one coenzyme Q, which is very, again, very useful because we're recycling that electron and we're gonna get four protons for one coenzyme Q instead of the two protons, which we would have gotten if we would have directly oxidized coenzyme Q.